Credit cards and debit cards are used the same, but do they offer the same protection if they're used fraudulently? In this episode, we're going to look at the differences between a debit card and a credit card and which one you should use to protect your financial health. So debit or credit card? Well, before we can get into the pros and cons of them, we need to first look at what are the risks. Well, the greatest risk are skimmers. That's the little devices that when you insert your card, it'll steal the information off the magnetic stripe on the back of the card. And if you think, well, there's the chip on it, so I don't have to worry about that risk anymore, not so much. There's things called shimmers that are just starting to come out where they can take the information off the chip as well. So unfortunately, nothing's 100% safe. So every time you use that card, whether it's a debit or credit, there's a risk of it being exposed. Another risk is a data breach. If an organization where you've used your card has your information on file or a merchant processing company has a data breach, that information is collected by the bad guys and sold online. And usually things such as, um, they refer to them as a card store. That's where you can buy credit cards card numbers. Uh, you can also buy the name, the address on the card. Sometimes it'll have the uh, security code, all different types of things. So the risk to using a debit or credit card is that it could be exposed by either a skimmer, shimmer, or through a data breach. Now you know what the risks are, which one's better to use? Well, you use them both the same way. So let's look about maybe federal law. Which ones are you protected from financial liability? Well, if you're using a debit card, that falls under banking laws and you are protected from fraudulent transactions as long as you report it to the financial institution within approximately 30 to 60 days. Check with your financial institution or your bank to find out how many days you have to report fraudulent transactions. With a credit card, very similar, except for it comes under credit card laws. And this states that you have up until 60 days to send written notification to the credit card company regarding the fraudulent transaction. Now, for a debit or a credit, if you report the fraudulent transaction outside of that timeline, you are 100% liable for those charges. So it's crucial that you are monitoring your bank statements and your credit card statements. And don't wait till you get that paper statement in the mail. Go ahead and use the app or sign up for online access, and that way you can check your account balances on a daily basis. All right, so you have the same protection whether you use a debit or credit card. So looking at both of these, the risk is the same and the protection, meaning your financial liability is the same as long as you report it in time. So what's left? Well, let's talk about whose money's at risk. If you're using a debit card, that card is tied directly to your bank account. So if there's a fraudulent transaction, that money comes out of your bank account and you contact the bank, the bank can take up to 90 days to put the money back in your account. So during that 90 day time frame, that money's gone. You don't have it in your account, which could lead to you bouncing checks or having bills not paid because of insufficient funds. Let's look at a credit card. With a credit card, it's not tied to any bank account. It is a credit card, meaning that you are borrowing money from the organization to purchase something, and then it's a debt that's created that you have to pay back. If there's a fraudulent transaction, the liability is created, but once the credit card company does their investigation and they realize it was fraudulent, the liability goes away. At no point in time do you lose any money or is any of your money withheld until they do the investigation. So bottom line, when it comes to, should you use a credit card or a debit card? Ask yourself, whose money would you rather get stolen? Yours or the credit card companies? One more tip I wanna throw in. A lot of people say, well, I just don't use credit or debit cards online. I get prepaid credit cards. That way I don't have to worry about any of my information or my actual cards that I use be compromised. It's not a good idea because it's a prepaid card. You're not offered the same protections as you do with a debit card or a credit card. If it's a prepaid card that gets exposed and the money's taken off of it, that money could be gone forever. So you're better off if you do anything online, use a straight good old fashioned credit card, one that is not tied to your bank account. Here's one more tip I recommend. For those of you that like to pay your bills by using your credit card so you can get the points, have at least two cards. One you use for gas stations and restaurants or when you're shopping online, because those are places where the card can be compromised or has a greater chance of being compromised. Then have a separate credit card that you use only for your auto pays. By having two separate cards, you lessen the chance of the one with your auto pays being exposed by a skimmer or some other form of uh, device used to collect credit card information. Because if you only have one card and you're using it at a gas station and they find out later there was a skimmer at the pump and that's the same one where you have your auto pays, now you have to go and change all of your auto pays, hopefully before the next 
payment goes out. Otherwise, it's going to bounce and kick back and then you're gonna have all kinds of issues. So I recommend having one card you use only for your auto pays, another card you use for gas stations, restaurants, online, or anywhere else where you do shopping. And also, make a list of what auto pays you have set up for that card. You can keep it in your file with that credit card or if you wanna have it on a spreadsheet, on your computer, whatever you wanna do, just make a list. So in the, in the event that that card does get compromised, you just pull out that list and you know exactly which ones you need to change and update with the new card information. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate you taking the time. And if you found this information to be beneficial and helpful, please go ahead and take a moment to share it with your friends and family and also leave me a review and subscribe. That way you can be uh, updated when new content becomes available. Also, don't forget to check out my blog at kerrykursky.com where there's additional information on this topic. That's it for now. Stay safe until next time.